I once again offer a full apology. Throughout his premiership, Boris Johnson has been no stranger to threats to his leadership. If he misled Parliament, he must resign. I expect him to resign immediately. I've called on this Prime Minister to resign. And he should be resigning. He's faced all manner of scandals that ignited the fury of critics and pundits calling on him to go. But this one feels different. Rishi Sunak and Sajid Javid triggered a wave of resignations in Johnson's government, with ministers saying the Prime Minister has been through far too many storms to retain integrity. But how did we get here? Well, throughout his premiership, Boris Johnson has been forced to apologise for his own behaviour after a series of own goals that have eroded some of his colleagues' confidence in his ability to lead. I apologise for, uh, for it. I think in, in, in hindsight it was uh, the wrong thing to do. Uh, I apologise to everybody who's been uh, badly affected. Until now, his ministers have always been prepared to give him another chance. But after a slew of resignations, patience with the Prime Minister is in short supply. Early on in his premiership, he was investigated by the Independent Office for Police Conduct over public funds that were paid to his former mistress, Jennifer R. Curie, while he was Mayor of London. Did you break the GLA Code of Conduct? Uh, no, and I've said I think everything I'm going to say on that matter. He avoided criminal charges, but the IOPC found that he should have declared an interest because of his relationship with the American. Many Tory MPs were furious when, in May 2020, the Prime Minister refused to sack his chief aide, Dominic Cummings, over his infamous lockdown-busting trip to Barnard Castle, which put a huge dent in public support for the government. I think he followed the instincts of every father and every parent, and I do not mark him down for that. Particularly among those who had voted Tory for the first time in 2019. Is it worth voting you, Mr Cummings, and another rule for everybody else? Do you think you're about to look? It turned out, of course, that Mr Johnson hadn't been obeying lockdown rules either. At the end of 2021, stories began to emerge of parties taking place in Downing Street during lockdown, which Mr Johnson denied had ever happened. He ended up being fined by the police for attending one such party and had to apologise to the Queen for the fact that his staff partied into the early hours on the night before Prince Philip's socially distanced funeral. Mr Johnson still faces a Standards Committee investigation into whether he'd lied to Parliament over Partygate, which could yet prove terminal for him. Partygate had been preceded by Wallpapergate, when the Prime Minister and his wife Carrie hired a high-end interior designer to redecorate the Downing Street flat at a reported cost of £112,000. initially paid for by the Tory donor, Lord Brownlow. A scandal that was regarded by many Tory MPs as being even worse than Wallpapergate because it involved a vote in the Commons was the Owen Paterson affair, when Mr Johnson demanded that his MPs vote for an overhaul of the standard system rather than suspending Mr Paterson for breaking rules on paid lobbying. Just a day after he forced his MPs to dip their hands in the blood, Mr Johnson abandoned his stance and Mr Patterson resigned. In June, no fewer than 148 Conservative MPs turned against their leader in a confidence vote. Uh, the, the threshold of 15% of the Parliamentary Party seeking a vote of confidence in the Prime Minister has been passed. Votes um, against the Prime Minister. He's lost the trust, I think, of the country. I think that's pretty clear on all the evidence that I've seen. But still, Mr Johnson vowed to fight on. In the same month, Lord Guite, the Prime Minister's independent ethics adviser, became the second man to resign from the role, ostensibly because of a row over steel tariffs, though it followed a series of disagreements between the two men over the PM's behaviour. Mr Speaker, to lose one ethics adviser was really an embarrassment, but to lose two in two years, just days after the Prime Minister's own anti-corruption czar walked out on him, well, it's becoming a bit of a pattern. Lord Guide's predecessor, Alex Allen, had quit over the Pretty Patel bullying row. Then, in what proved to be the final straw for many, the Prime Minister misled the country over what he knew about groping allegations levelled at Chris Pincher before he made him Deputy Chief Whip. Downing Street 
had said he was not aware of any specific allegations against the MP at the time. I don't know, and that is news to me, that the Prime Minister was briefed on the specific um, complaint that was made and then the outcome. Before his former permanent undersecretary at the Foreign Office, Lord MacDonald, revealed that he definitely had. Mr Johnson blamed his unreliable memory for the mix-up. So what happens now? Well, Mr Johnson is determined to fight on, but his career may yet have suffered fatal damage from the high-level resignations from his government. The 1922 Committee of Tory backbenchers, which is about to elect a new executive, could yet change its rules to allow another confidence vote in the Prime Minister before the 12-month grace period is up. And if that fails to happen, the biggest moment of danger is likely to come in the autumn when the Standards Committee passes judgment on whether Mr Johnson lied to Parliament over Partygate. If the answer is yes, it would surely mean curtains for the PM, but not designer ones this time. Until now, Mr Johnson's most loyal supporters have argued that he is a man who has won elections time and time again and that he is the only person who could lead the Tories to victory at the next election. They say he's the politician who reaches parts other politicians can't reach. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. But that may no longer be true. The recent by-elections have suggested that a lot of people who voted Tory in the past will no longer vote Tory as long as Mr Johnson is leader. That absolutely nothing and no one, uh, least of all her, is going to stop us with getting on uh, for delivering uh, for the British people. The question for many Tories now is whether Mr Johnson remains an electoral asset or whether he's become an electoral liability.